Hello everyone and it's Megan from Crazy Florida. I have just come back from my Easter weekend away doing markets down at the beautiful Ocean Grove Peninsula area, hence why you've got this beautiful beach photo instead of looking at my face. Uh, today I'm putting together a video that's actually been quite a few months in the making. It's called Jack and Jack is a beautiful round board that I have made and I am showing you the process of Jack from start to finish. So there's a series of videos that I've made in every single step of the way so that you can see the process that I have done. But before we get onto this, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And I pay my respects to the elders past, present and any elders emerging. Uh, as I say, it is my absolute privilege to be able to create the art that I create on the lands that they once owned. All right, let's get on to Jack now, shall we? All right, so here we are. We're going to go through the process from start to finish for my painting and resining a board. Now, I'm going to call this board, I think we'll call it Jack. So this is Jack. Jack, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with him yet, but we'll get there in the end. So my first part of my board prep um, is pretty simple, pretty easy, and I go through all these steps because I feel like the end product is worth all these steps. It just makes my boards um, have just that nicer finish and they just look amazing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up my board ready for painting. So I use frog tape. This is the green frog tape. You can also get, this is in Australia, um, you can also get blue frog tape, but I find the green for acrylic pouring much easier, nicer to work with. I think we'll go like that. This is going to be my paint surface. So this is going to be my nice straight line. If you wanted to do like a wavy line, you absolutely can do that. What I do before I put the tape down is I stick it and cut my line out and then I stick that tape down on the board so that I've got that wavy line cut out. It just helps give you a nice crisp edge if that's what you're after, which is what I like doing. So we're just going to pop this around onto the back. We're going to do the same. And then what we're actually going to do first is we're going to flip the board over and I'm going to tape around my edges, my sides. Now, I like, um, when I first started painting boards, I didn't tape my sides. And then what I found was the paint would come all the way down, which was absolutely fine, looks amazing. But when I go to resin, the resin gets to here and there's nothing to catch on. So when I had to remove the resin from the back of the board, there'd be gaps between the paint, the resin and the board. So I like to now tape half of my board um, because then what happens then is, I've got to do this in pieces because it's round, um, is because then when I go to resin my board, half the side is paint and then the resin can drip down over and then stick on to the board. It just looks nicer too, but that's just my also my opinion. So we start off by doing about half. I know you can't really exactly see right now, but as you, if I lift her up, you can see that there's my tape. It's just half on my board. So we're just going to fold this over. Now, obviously we've got the holes. The holes can be a bit of a pain. So what I do, if I can remember where I put my bloody Stanley knife, which might actually help, um, is as I'm going, I actually cut. Because once you get multiple layers of tape on top of each other, it's actually harder to cut through and get crisp lines. So we're just gonna do the rest of the round. Trying to keep the tape even as possible. I don't like that edge. So we're just lining her up. I like using my boards, or sometimes I actually put 
my boards up on a container because then it's easier to see. So we'll just throw that down. And so then what I've got, and I'm hoping this is going to be in a good picture frame, is beautiful half of my board is tape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape the rest of my back. And yes, I use a lot of tape. And again, we're just going to cut the rest of this circle out. I keep joking that I should buy shares in frog tape because the amount I use is sometimes a bit ridiculous. But the good thing about it is it rips. You don't need to cut it with a pair of scissors. It peels off really nicely. Ah, this is not going to rip for me. There we go. And it's just really easy to use. Really easy. It also comes in different sizes. So that's my thick tape, which is obviously the more expensive, then the medium, and then the small. So depending on what you're doing and the size and the shape of the board, um, depends on what type tape, what size tape you use. So that's my back, that's my front. So now what I'm just gonna quickly go do, apologies, I forgot to bring it in with me, is to get my glad wrap. Sorry, I had to run to the kitchen. I'll just use my straightforward cling wrap, glad wrap, whatever you call it in your country. I like to tape up my boards, um, protect all my surfaces from paint. Um, I know this is not the best for the, you know, the environment. Sometimes I will use aluminium foil because the good thing about aluminium foil is if you roll it into a ball, it can actually be recycled. I just don't have any at the moment. So and now my cling wrap has done what cling wrap likes to do or glad wrap or well, I don't know what you guys call it in your country. It's ripped. It's actually, yeah. That's what, another reason why I hate using it. But anyway, so we're gonna take the front of the board Cling wrap the front of the board first. Do, 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 do. Oh, see, it's all bunching up already. Bloody cling wrap. Bloody cling wrap, she says. All right, so we're just going to line her up as much as we can. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to tape it. So I'm going to get my tape again. This time I'm using the thinner tape. Do, do, do. And we're going to tape our cling wrap down. So that's still my edge of my, where my painting's gonna be. So the cling wrap's just been brought down a bit. And then we flip her over. Let's do this. And then wrap the back. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. Or not. Was pretty good. It is a process, okay? But as I said at the start, I, when you see the finished product at the end of this video, you will understand why I go through this process. Because they just, I just love the way they finish. And sometimes taking the extra time to do all these extra steps, is actually worth it and you can tell that your customers actually appreciate it and they can see the difference they might not see the steps that you take but when they come and look at your pieces they can actually tell you've taken the time and the care to give them just that extra professional look i love it and I keep joking with my fellow stall holders, there's my non-slip mat, um, that I should start charging people to come and touch my boards because you're at a market and they just go, oh, oh that feels lovely. Look at that nice straight line. It's, um, it's so good. Um, video number nine, 
I think, in my YouTube channel is all about how to get the straight line on the resin. Now, yes, I'm going to show you how to do that in this full video for Jack. Remember, this is called Jack. Um, but if you want to see how I resin my pieces, video number nine talks about the straight lining. So now that's my board prep. So glad wrap, tape, my lines, and doing my half circle, my half board here. Now, my second stage of my prep is I like to gesso my boards as part of my prep process. So I just use a bit of gesso, acrylic gesso. Um, the reasoning why I do this is depending on the type of the board, um, the cheaper the board that you tend to buy, the cheaper the wood, um, the more chances you've got of that wood seeping through into your design. So if I'm doing like a white painting, then sometimes I will get some light brown of the wood seeping through onto that white paint. So I do use gesso as a bit of a barrier for that to happening. Um, it doesn't always work depending on the board. It's also, I like it because it gives a surface for my acrylic paints to attach to. Um, and again, it's another simple, easy process. So we, I'm just gonna spin this around so I can do it from this angle. Is, we just, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be thick. It's just about giving a nice coating to your board. Some people use sprays, not spray gessos, but spray enamel and enamel and um, enam I can't say it. Spray enamel enamels enamel enamel. Well, wow. engine enamel enamel enamel. Um, I just like gesso because I can see where my gesso is going. All right, so that is a gesso board. I'm just going to put him aside and let him dry. And then we'll come back later on and we'll throw a design on it. I have to think about what I want to do on this baby. So we'll be back a little bit later and we'll continue this show. Till then, see you soon. All right, so we are now back with the second stage of Jack. So my gesso has dried. Uh, so now I'm just getting myself organized. I still haven't fully decided exactly what I'm gonna do with him yet. I think it's gonna be a swipe, um, but I'm just gonna get myself organized. So obviously we put some gloves on, I've got my apron. I'm going to do what I like to call a reverse swipe or as some other people call it, call it a loaded palette swipe. Um, and I'm going to do it on a dark background. So I'm putting down my pillow paint. So I'm just using some black um, British paints, which is what we can get in Australia. Uh, so quite fortunate that I can buy a pillow paint that's already tinted black straight in the can and use that. Sometimes I do water it down a little bit. Sometimes it's the most perfect consistency, just depending on what I'm doing. So I'm just making sure I've got enough as a base, excuse me. And then I'm just popping some more black down around the sides because I obviously I've used the white gesso. You can get black gesso, but because I'm using the white gesso, I want to make sure that my pillow has covered all that white because you just don't want, there'll be parts of this where the swipe doesn't drip over the sides. And the last thing you want is this white gap in the middle of your blackboard. And it's the same with my center circle. I'm making sure that that whole center circle is covered in black because having any white pop out is just not gonna look very good. So I think that's about it for my pillow. I'm just making sure last minute checks, making sure it's over on my frog tape so that again, when I peel the frog tape off, I haven't got any white surface showing. So now I have my palette knife. I think, I can't remember what number palette knife this is that I'm using, but it's one of my favorite to do a reverse swipe on. It's just a gorgeous uh, shape. So what we do first is we add our cell activator. So this is my pain, no, oh, my pain's gray. This is my Oxide Black Amsterdam cell activator that, um, I will be using first. So when I'm doing the reverse swipe, the cell activator always is the first thing to load on. And now I'm just gonna get my first color. So again, we're reversing our colors. So this is
All right, so we have Jack back. Um, Jack is all nice and dry and cured. So now what we're actually going to do is remove all the tape from Jack. Um, this is all the protective tape that we had on for him. So we're just going to take the back off first before we tackle the front. Quite often use my oops, Stanley knife for help with this. So I'm just going to remove that first just to make life easy. Straight into the bin. All right, so I'm just going to flip it this way and we're just going to take all this part here off. So as you remember, I use half of the tape to go around my edges to give me that nice straight line. So now we're just going to concentrate on getting that here all off so that and it will come off in pieces. So... I might just try and get the back done first. The tape can be a bit fiddly. It can come off in nice big pieces or it can come off in little chunks like we've got going on today. It depends on the heat, depends on the tape, it depends on the paint. Um, there's really no set way of doing it right or wrong. Um, and then when I'm peeling off my sides, I actually do tend to go quite carefully because I don't want to pull anything off this part here. I want this part here to be nice and straight. And there we go. So that is pretty much the sideline here. Hopefully you can see it all done. So now I'm just going to loosen up the back, similar to what I do when I've been resining. Not pull it off, but just loosen it. Flip the board around. Now, I'm going to take the top layer off because this is a really good example of what can and can't happen. If I've got this full of paint, sometimes it will come off nice and clean and I have a beautiful straight line, but sometimes it actually lifts the paint off and I end up with these wonky white bits from my gesso from underneath. So I take the top layer off. See, and it doesn't always come off nice and straight. So that part there is still hanging out. So I'm just going to peel that and you'll see. See, it's not coming off. See, nice and straight. So what I like to do is I actually get my ruler and my knife, exacto knife, Stanley knife, whatever you want to call them. And I will cut my straight line where I can see the tape. So if I lift this up, hopefully you can see that along here, there is a ridge that has formed, trying to get the shine out, where my tape sits. So I'm going to use that as a guide. I'm just gonna turn it that way, I think, today. No, that way, depending on where the light's shining, so I can see clearly. And that's why it's also really important that you want this to be nice and cured and dry so that you can touch it. You can use your, your rulers on it. You can use your Stanley knife on it. It's not going to cause you any problems. I have to apologise for the background noise of the fan. This is summer in Melbourne, Australia. So today was something like 29 degrees, which is not that hot. It's actually a beautiful Melbourne day. But it does leave my studio quite warm. So I have my fan on in here for the night. So we're just lightly, lightly, lightly exactoing a straight line. So the whole idea of this is when I peel my tape very carefully, very slowly, you'll see that we're getting this gorgeous straight line. Now I do have a couple of ridges of white along here and that's easily cleaned up. So what we'll do, is I get a little bit of cloth, which I'm just going to cut a little bit off the corner of my chucks. It's a chucks white, but it's just a cleaning cloth. There ain't nothing special about it. It's just a little corner of my chucks and I've got my isopropyl alcohol. 
I love my isopropyl alcohol. I should actually go to shares for a diggers. Diggers, it's called. Typical Australian brand diggers. And we're just using that to clear up those little white bits that have just popped out. Because on a nice dark board, the last thing you want to see is some white edges from the gesso underneath. So by using my diggers, I'm actually cleaning that out nicely and just making sure. And so here there's a corner bit. So I'm just going to use my diggers and my chucks to just help clean that out. Actually, it's not exactly straight. There's a little diggy bit here. Diggy bit, don't know what you call that. There we go. Dreg, you know, from sheep spun, I don't know. So we're just going to get that off, yeah. Digger it up. See, there's a little bit of white there from my gesso. So we'll just dig it in. Because the last thing someone wants to do is purchase a beautiful product that has this little bit of stuff hanging out. It just doesn't look nice. And for me, it's all about the finishing product. So we give that a clean off so that you can't see it. It's not really behaving today, so I think we might have to just give it a slight shave. You've got to be careful because you don't want to cut the board itself. There we go, that's better. Yeah, heaps better. Straight away I can see the difference. And then it's the same again down this end. There's a little bit of white, so I'm just going to shave a little bit of it. Not much. You just give it a little bit of a, like a, um, a edge, so that my alcohol can get in. And again, keeping it straight so it doesn't actually impact on my design or my final product. Might need another squirt and digger. Don't need much. Such good alcohol. It's 90, um, what they say it is? I don't know. 90 something, 98% alcohol. It's been the best alcohol I have found in Australia. Um, we just buy it from our local Bunnings, which is our local hardware store. Um, I'm just checking the underneath now just to make sure there's no gesso popping through. And it's, as again, it's all about my finished product. All right, so there's Jack. Jack is all done. I'm just going to zoom out. So Jack is all done and he's now ready for a coat of resin. So I am actually waiting for some resin to arrive because I've run out. So as soon as that resin has arrived, we'll go through the next stage and I'll go through how I prepare my board for a resin process. Uh, but it's going to look beautiful. There is just this stunning colour here that is just going to shimmer once the resin's applied. And I'm really excited about that. So we'll see you for the second final stage of Jack, very soon. All right, so now we're back with the prepping Jack for resin. So I'm just going to go through all the tools that I use. So I've got my Liquitex gloss and a little cup to pour the Liquitex in and a paintbrush. I use these as my sealant. I've got my frog, green frog tape, as I've mentioned earlier. I love my green frog tape. A pair of scissors, my Stanley knife, and we're good to go. So the first part of my board is popping my frog tape down to protect my surfaces and to also so I can get that nice straight line of resin. There is no point in doing all this work to get a straight line of my painting to then mess it up by having a wonky resin line. So I use my frog tape here. I've got about half a centimetre, five mil um, gap between my paint and where the frog tape is. And that's where the resin will sit and end. And now I, I on the, when I painted the board, I did the half tape around the edges. Now I don't do that. I'm just taping the back because I want that resin to drop right down to the bottom of the board and seal that paint in. So this is pretty much the same process, but what I do this time is I actually cut the edge off the tape around the board so that we've only got the tape on the back, not the sides. So it's a bit of a painful process. And yes, I have cut myself once or twice. Um, I nearly needed stitches 
uh, was at the end of last year with a brand new blade in the knife. So yes, it's a process that um, does cause some injuries, but it's just one of those things that I, I take the time to do because it just makes that final product that much nicer. And it's amazing how many comments I get from people about the finished product in the end. So we're just going to add, just going to cut out that little hole in the center there. Um, so that, as I said, if you lay the tape, it makes it a bit harder to cut with the, with the Stanley knife. So I always cut the first layer of tape first, then pop the next layer down so that I'm only cutting one piece of tape at a time. So we'll do that. Um, and then sometimes I'll also add a little bit of extra tape just in case being warm day, the resin might flow a bit more than it normally does. Or if for some reason my board's on the slightest of slants, it might mean that the resin flows on the back and flows down on the tape. And I just don't want to get it on the board because then it's that much more painful to clean up at the end. You either have to sand your board um, or do other things to try and get the resin off. Um, this process in the end actually while it feels like it's taking a lot more time now actually saves a lot of time once the resin's dried and cured in regards to not having to sand my boards not having resin all over the back of my boards and having to think of ways to get that resin off to keep my board nice and neat so that's the back of my board all done so now what I do excuse me is I now get my Liquitex gloss um, it's just a liquid test gloss. There's nothing special about it. Um, I just go a little bit into my little cup and I run that with a brush around all the edges of where I've got the tape. And what that does is it when once it's dried, it provides this nice little sealant between the tape and the board so that the resin doesn't fall underneath the tape. Uh, when I first started doing resin work, I didn't do this. And what I was finding is that the resin, if there was a little gap in the tape, was seeping underneath the tape between the tape and the board and lifting the tape off. And then I had this big pile of resin underneath. Um, and then I had to sand and it just, it's a pain. I really like the natural finish of the board. So this is another step that I find is so worth doing. It doesn't have to be a thick coat. It's just a nice coat of the Liquitex gloss to provide a seal and I do it on the front as well because again you don't want that straight line ruined by resin slipping underneath the tape and that tape being lifted and so when you peel that tape off you've got this wonky resin line excuse me so we just take the time to Liquitex gloss around the surface uh, where the resin is going to connect um, and again it also makes peeling that tape off a heck of a lot easier at the end so there we go my board is ready for resin so let's head off to the next step and get some resin work Go going on. all right so here we are about to resin jack so we've gone through all the steps and we're ready to go my resins arrived i've got some brand new bottles of resin so let's go through all the equipment we need for resin first things first is my respiratory mask while stone coat resins say they're voc volatile organic um, or um, compounds free I still like to protect my lungs I've only got one set of lungs so I will always wear a respiratory mask I don't care what the product says this is my stone coat art coat resin it is stone coats my favorite resin to work with it is easy to use and it's equal amounts of a and b resin so it's just it's just simple it really is and I have found it to be the easiest resin to work with, the resin that has the longest working time, um, but I also find I have a lot less imperfections with my resin. I've got my little plastic cup here and I've already measured out on the side equal portions of water. Um, so what I usually do is pour some water into the cup for how many meals and then pour that same amount of water in again and mark each time so that with your cups and stuff, you'll have different shaped cups. So pouring 200 mils in, based on the cut mark, it might actually not be overly accurate. So I always will measure. Um, so I put 200 mils of water in, then mark it, put another 200 mils of water and mark it again. I've got my gloves, I've got my stirring tool, and I've got my battery operated mixer, and I only use this for resin. It saves all the hard work of stirring. I used to get such sore hand and arms from mixing my resin for three to four minutes that now using that battery operated battery operated tool 
oh my god it's a game changer so gloves on mask on and now we're going to pour our resin so we start off with our a so our a is our thick thicker resin um, it doesn't matter that it's blue in the bottle it doesn't dry blue I can promise you that um, it's a new bottle so I have to open up the new bottle with my Stanley knife as I said brand new hasn't been used yet had to wait for a couple of weeks for delivery so we go up to that first red marker that I've got on my bottle on my little jug there um, so it's a little bit of a process to make sure you want it as even as possible the other good thing about stone coat resin is it's equal portions in volume not weight so if I'm using 200 mils then it's 200 mils of A 200 mils of B which is why I measure the lines out equally uh, so now we get our B bottle and this flows like a little bit of thick water um, comes out a lot faster so again you've just got to be that little bit more cautious when you're pouring your B because if you over pour it's harder to fix um, so again we go up to that second line that we've got on our jug um, and then we're good to stir so with this resin we stir for about three to four minutes um, and I use a tool so I find by using my tool I get less air bubbles but I don't care about air bubbles anyway when I'm mixing because I will pop those air bubbles out towards the end so you'll see here we've got our two layers of resin so when I start mixing this is quite clear when I start mixing this is actually going to go cloudy so um and that's part of the process so in the first few minutes it'll be cloudy and then as the resin starts to mix together it then starts to become clear uh, we will speed this up in a moment because you don't really want to watch me for four minutes uh, mixing up resin it is not very <laughs> very fun to watch so you'll see here see how it's all cloudy um, so we're just going to put our battery on hold it down and we just lightly stir it and let the machine do all the work so it's quite cloudy and thick there um, I'm going to speed this video up and we're going to come back once the resin's all mixed
So this is my storage room. This is where I leave my pieces to dry. It's level so that resin won't slip back this way and onto my ball, which is another reason why it's good to have your green frog tape as your barrier because then it means your board's going to stay nice and clean. I put a plastic sheet down over the top and that protects everything from going in. It's got quite a few things here drying at the moment. So we'll be back in about six hours to take the tape off. So here we are with the last step of my board jack. So the resin's been curing for about six hours. Um, it's really important to remember that the resin curing time, um, this time is very much adjustable depending on what the weather is. I probably should have come and done this at about five hours. I probably have left it a little bit too long um, for this, um, but we'll go through the process anyway. So now you can see that my silicon mats here have stuck to my tape from that, but look how easy it is that they just peel on off. So that's why I, I use these little silicon, silicon mats. Excuse me, my cat's uh, messing around in the background. And I just replace those silicon mats with some new ones so that when I put the board back down, it's again not going to stick to any mat. I check all the other silicon on there and make sure that um, none of them have got resin on. If they have, then I'll just pop another silicon mat over the top. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our blowtorch very lightly on the back here. And we want to see those resin drips that are on the tape there start to flow um, so we just again very lightly if you go too hard over a section it's going to burn through the tape and the resin and actually burn your board which means then you're gonna have to sand that marking off um, so we just do it very lightly I feel like I'm having to do this for a bit long because I've probably left it a little bit longer because it's been a warm day today in Australia when I did this um, probably not the best day for resining but that's okay um, ideal resin temperature is about 25 degrees. I might have been resining when it was probably a little bit hotter. Uh, so it's, it's just food for thought. Um, I was trying to get some products done. So now that we've softened that resin, we now peel off the tape. Um, and if we've done it very well, sometimes the tape comes off in one nice smooth motion or sometimes like before it doesn't, but it should then leave us with a nice clear edge and no resin on the back of the board. Um, so we've taken off the main tape. So now what we'll do, oops, excuse me. Now what we'll do is lift the, um, side tapes off. Again, we've got to be very careful when we're doing this. We don't want, the board still got wet resin on it. So we don't want that resin touching any surfaces because it will end up leaving imperfections. So I feel like I'm being a little bit rough with this board, but that's okay. So we do the same thing again. We get our blow torch and we lightly blow over where the tape is and that edge. And then what will happen or what should happen is that when we pull this tape off, we get that nice crispy resin line. So there you see in the corner, I've just burnt my tape very lightly there. So I've got to be careful. All right, so we are going to peel this tape off and hopefully we have our nice straight crispy line and there we go so there is Jack all good and ready to go um, there's just a bit of glue left behind from that tape that I'm just removing with my glove fortunately it hasn't damaged my board so I'm quite lucky there so sometimes I'll actually get my blowtorch and um, I'm just getting a bit more of that gluey off with my poking stick um, and then sometimes I'll get my blowtorch and just go over that edge again um, to make sure that that edge then becomes nice and smooth. And then what I will usually do is then tilt it to dry and finish its curing process on a tilt so that the resin doesn't fall back. Um, so that's pretty much the process of Jack. And so, yep, I'm doing that little blowtorch there just to allow that resin bit to flow back. Um, hopefully this won't take like forever or just a very, very light blow. Um, I feel like I'm going on for a while here, 
but yes it should just be a quick blow in every location until you see that resin flowing a little bit and so then what I will do is I will then lift that board the back of the board um, up on a little bit of a stick or something I've got these sticks that I've made to raise the end of the board so that the resin doesn't flow back um, and so then that gives me a nice crisp straight line and hopefully what you can see now is the color change with Jack from the blues to the purples to the golds. Um, it really is really evident in the sunlight, but I'm just hoping here in my natural light that you can get that color shift. Um, and that's Jack ready to go. So this is Jack all finished. As you can see, you can't see a single purple there, but if I was to move around, you would definitely see those purples. So I hope you've enjoyed watching Jack get created. Um, I hope you've learnt some stuff from it. Please remember to like and subscribe um, if you do. Um, ask any questions, leave any comments and I will certainly reply. And until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay happy.